What's up folks, Canada 12 here, welcome back to more Tekken 1, the arcade version. Last time we played as Yoshimitsu. And on to the second to last character to show off here. Michelle Tang. Final round. Ooh, I actually wouldn't mind if they brought her back. Michelle was only ever a prominent character in Tekken 1 and 2 before being replaced by Julia in every game since. But I actually wouldn't mind to see her come back. If for no other reason than for a cameo. Like, maybe see her like talk to Julia or something. That'd be cool. Hey, she's got that move in this game. Nice! Alright. I forgot her pants were. Were they white? Or. I know, she, I know she had a black shirt. This is her second. This is her player 2 outfit. Which is her in like more casual clothing. But I could have sworn her pants weren't white in the PS1 version. I know a King's, out, King's player 2 outfit changed in the arcade for club. Yeah, the King's outfit in the arcade version is different compared to. Oh, goodness. Uh, com King's outfit in the arcade version is different compared to how it looks in the PlayStation 1 version. It's player 2 outfit. I guess it's different, it's different colors in the. <clears throat> different colors in the arcade version. That didn't work. Oh, I missed that KO screen so much. Why did they get rid of it in Tekken 6? His KO scream in Tekken 6 onward is so lame compared to his classic one. I kind of doubt it, but I uh, I think it would be really cool if we had like a little legacy battle voice option in Tekken 8. Like where we get to hear their classic screams. At least in battle, like in cutscenes and whatnot, they can keep their actual voices, but in battle would be cool. We just hear Paul's classic Final round. screams, like what? And we get to hear them all go, what yeah, yeah, no, we could get Okay. Nope. You Final round. Dang. That move is. I feel like that flip move of Nina's is kind of broken because I felt in this game because I feel like even if you block it, you're like stunned long enough to where she can get an easy hit on you. So like, you win or lose depending on whether or not you block. I mean, you lose anyway. Regardless of whether or not you get hit or you block. You win. On that move. Final round. Oh goody. That's it, because I had so much luck with Paul last time. Oh, I was trying to counter him. Uh, tried to block that because I knew it was coming. Didn't have enough time. You Final round. Fight. Oh, 
Oh, he's got that move in this game, that's neat. Tried to grab him. Actually, I don't even know if there is back. If you can't throw people when their back is turned in this game, they might have been very sad in uh, Tekken 2. Well, they did introduce in Tekken 2, I Whoops, I didn't want to change the view. Who, for whatever reason, has a masculine voice in this. And a quite masculine body, too. Thanks for, thankfully, she get a much more fitting voice in Tekken 2. Unfortunate that she shares Yoshimitsu's voice in this game. Alright, 
같이 <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Just going back and forth. Okay. That uh, wasn't as long as the Yoshimitsu was done. Uh, still, though, Paul, Paul, for whatever reason, wants to give me the most trouble. Then again, I like hardly ever play Michelle. Not really good with the Chang sisters. They're not even sisters. It's an adopted mother and daughter. Mother and adopted daughter. <laughs> one day, one day, Julia decided to adopt Michelle as her mother. <laughs> So, by the way, the story with Kunimitsu, I'm pretty sure, is that she steals the pendant that Michelle treasures, like it's her mother's pendant. Or her father's pendant, I think. Uh, one of her parents, but it's important. The pendant that is important to her family that gets dropped after uh, Tekken 3. They stop making that the MacGuffin after Tekken 3. Alright. So, thank y'all for watching. Get ready for more. Or actually, get ready for the finale of Tekken 1. Kitty B! Finale of Tekken 1 arcade version coming up next. So, everybody have a good day. Take it easy. Stay safe. See y'all next time. Bye!